Sensor were scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From the wind. Watch how I saw. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me today, we have Amy. Hello. We have Stuart. Guten Tag. And we have Sky. Sup, guys. And tonight on the podcast, we are covering D23 and a few of our own little Star Wars ideas to throw out there. We'll get to what those ideas are about a little bit later. But first up, I would like to announce the winners to our first contest that we have done in ages. And the contest was one of those like and share the image type ones and you win a poster. So four people have won the Evil Crew poster. Who are, and I apologize in advance if I screw your name up. I, I will screw your name up. Unintentionally, I swear. Um, we have Tyler K- Cup. I'm assuming that's K A U P P. Yeah, I'm, I, I have no idea. Um, Tegan Barnes. I'm pretty sure I got that one. All right. Kate Bishop and Jason Weber all won the Evil Crew, which is the one we only just finished working on, and it, the picture itself looks spectacular. And that poster will be printed out and sent out to you guys as soon as we can. Winners of the Hero Crew. Ah, uh, Sylvie Fewer. Wow, that that last name. S- <laughs> Sylvie Philosely. Yeah, we'll go with that. Samuel O'Loughlin. Yes, O'Loughlin. Yeah. Um, Ali Maz. Oh God. <laughs> there is not <laughs> enough vowels in that last name. <laughs> Wow. I mouse think hard? I think it's supposed to be mouse hard. Yeah, we'll go with that. And Eric Anderson. I hope I got that one right. Um, <laughs> congratulations, you guys have won the Hero Poster. So um, get in contact with us if you haven't already. Uh, check your inboxes on, and make sure that you've got the messages. Uh we have, if you haven't got the messages, send us a message on the facebook.com slash save sci-fi page and jump on there anyway and keep an eye out for other contests because you never know when we're going to do another one. Depends on how bored I am on any given week, really. Um, so, D23 just finished. Yep. And I, Stuart has been... keeping up with everything. And he's been jumping at the bit because he heard that there was going to be a new Lion King movie. And there's nothing he might loves more than Lion King. Ma- <laughs> so when ya- <laughs> yeah. Don't sing it. Yeah. No, so like, D- D23 it. is like a convention for Disney. It's where they announce all their cool things they're working on. Um, that's about it. They should do it. Yeah, so yeah, D three three is um they focus on all their stuff, so live action and animated as well, so Pixar and all that stuff. So yeah. Toy Story, Fighting Dory, and a couple of other new ones as well. Yeah. It's sort of like E three, but for Star Wars and Marvel. Pretty uh, much, effectively. So yeah, so Stuart, I didn't even know what was going on. I I heard bits and pieces, but I wasn't expecting much, and then all sorts of craziness dropped. Oh, Stuart. Yeah. This is hundred percent you go. So yeah, uh, we'll go. We'll start with the um, with the animated stuff. Um, bombshells were tr- uh, bombshell was dropped with new Toy Story four. It is going to be a love story between Woody and Miss Bo Peep. Nah, it's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've had a on on again, off again. I hate you type relationship I for a while. You. So. Yeah, it's Ra- Randy Newman is actually going to be doing the music for it, so... Nice. Nostalgia. Pretty much. But yeah, that's nothing new. What's next? 
<laughs> um, uh, Dory, Finding Dory, they brought some... Uh, oh, some God, no. Dory. No, just... No, no. <laughs> They're hunting a fish, just, okay? Just no. They're hunting a fish who's got a memory span of about... Oh, look, something shiny. <laughs> oh, like David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um... They did announce, and I'm going to keep this on animation, that Big Hero 6 will be a world in Kingdom Hearts 3. So, really looking forward to that. Nice. A second episode of it? No, no, no. So, what, uh, what, can, what um, it's going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to be based after the movie. Ooh. So it's so it's this, sort of a sequel. Yeah, this is going to be like original stuff that they're going to well, they're going to write for this, not copying the movie. This is going to be after the movie, after they've after they've defeated the big baddie, and the, and this is when they are formed as a team. So. so this is after they defeated the big baddie and stopped the Stargate. Pretty much, yes. <laughs> so yeah, they're running all new material, and it's going to be really nice that they're running new material for for an established uh, storyline already. Yeah. So really, really cool. But, and no. a lot of people who love Figure 3 are going to be really excited for six. it. Well. Hero 6. Not six. Six. So, Stuart, Stuart can't maths. We already knew that. <laughs> See, Stuart, is good. Stuart is to maths like I am to English. <laughs> English. Badly. So, now we'll move on to the live action stuff. Oh, will their bombshells drop from Marvel and Star Wars? Yeah, if this had happened oh, a know. little while ago at um, Comic-Con. Comic-Con, there would be no San Diego left. There would just be a <laughs> smoldering crater where San Diego used to be caused by a detonation of awesome. So I'm surprised Anaheim is up and still alive yeah. after the bombs that were dropped. Oh, yeah. Right. So, um, to start things off, they started, uh, Marvel kicked everything off, and they started with Doctor Strange. Very nice. And so they're talking about how they're doing Doctor Strange, and they sent a um, and Benedict s- sent a video message from um, London saying that he's filming, that they're starting filming in November. Nice. And he can't wait to bring you the the film a year after, and he also did a little joke and said, "Live long and prosper." Because <laughs> <laughs> wow. of how many because of how many pop culture things they're in. Yeah. Nice. Huh? But yeah, they also gave up. Um, uh, what uh, what uh, Doctor Strange is going to be? His backstory. Yeah. So Stephen Strange, that's his full name, is a neurosurgeon who is an ac- who is in an accident that ruins who ruins his career, leading him on the path to becoming Sorcerer Supreme. Fair enough. So that's a nice little that's a nice little tidbit for us to enjoy. Yes. Now we move along to the real big bomb, Captain America: Civil War. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Yeah. So they had um. So it came obviously we know it's coming out next year. Um, Anthony Mackie came out on stage. Uh, Falcon. Uh, telling uh, jokingly saying that he flew in from Germany, with one week left in filming, and he and then they and then uh, Chris Evans came on stage. So they actually had Captain America there himself. Nice. In the awesome. um, outfit. <laughs> no, no, no. They're just in casual clothes, unfortunately. Well, they didn't want but, to do um, another Loki. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. But no, um, they, um, Evans and Mackie uh, t- uh, said they're both big Disney fans and um, they love being involved with Disney work because they, they grew up with it and stuff. And, and it's because and then, um, they've, Disney has given them millions of dollars via Marvel. That Five too. bucks says that's it. <laughs> That too. <laughs> and, then they, and then Mackie jokingly says, and then we go on a trail and sing the Frozen theme song. <laughs> to which everyone boo. To which everyone boo them, <laughs> as they would. No one blames yeah. anyone in that scenario. They had and it then coming. We, then we move on to a a extended sizzle reel. This is what the website called, but a, a um a teaser, which I have not been able to find anywhere. Yeah. So go- Good luck so with go- that. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to read through what uh what um the website that was there. Uh, uh, told us, or what they wrote down. So it um, opens up with Falcon um, operating Red Wing. Now, in the comics, Red Wing is sort of an assistant to Falcon, but in, as a bird. But in this, he's he's a um a drone, and he's scanning a van that has um crossbones in it. 
So okay. they stopped the they stopped the um, they stopped the van. Uh, uh, Cap and Crossbones are fighting, and Crossbones mentions Bucky, and that he remembers him, which leads to me thinking, which leads me back to the Ant Man movie, and the end scene, after the credits where Bucky's sort of stuck in the um, in that garage that he that he was fighting him. Yeah. And then he did the damage to the arm, which is why he's he was pinned. Yeah. Looks so. Uh, which makes a lot more sense. Then it brings on um, General Ross, William Hurt, because he was in the movie. And he's stating that the world isn't sure that Captain America is a hero or a vigilante. So the usual argument. Yeah. So yeah, set, this is setting up the this is setting up the the, um, the split. Yeah. Um, then goes to uh, Scarlet Witch, showing uh, she's got some fighting skills since we've last seen her. She's in, employing Lucha Libre style, Lucha Libre style fighting moves. Oh God! Of course. So instead of using instead of, instead of using their powers, they're gonna make they're gonna make her put a mask on, called a Rey Mysterio. No one's gonna, no one's gonna get that reference. I got it. Okay, uh, moving along. Um, uh... That shows. <laughs> yeah, there, it'd be so much if I could watch this instead of have to talk oh, yeah. about it. I would, I would so much rather watch it, but oh, unfortunately, we're too small. We're, we're small fish. We'd never get invited to that. Marvel, yeah. we love you. Please invite us. <laughs> so yeah, moving, moving along, it shows Bucky talking to, uh, talking to Captain America and showing that he's get, regaining his memory. Nice. Hmm. Uh, then move then moves along to the to a quick funeral scene. Doesn't show much on that unfortunately, so we don't know who the scene is for. Rumour is can, it's meant to be it, Peggy. Uh there's another rumor actually. Oh. And I'll bring uh, I'll bring it up after this. Yep. Um moving along after the after the funeral we see a quick pick uh peek at Vision and Black Panther in their outfits. So we actually get to see Black Panther's costume. Nice. Outside uh, of leaked set photos. Yes, outside, of, which does look cool. So you're actually going to see it in the in this trailer. So whenever they drop a trailer for it, which I'm guessing probably might come Star Wars. Yeah, that's which what they make... that's what they did last year. Yeah. Um, moving along, it goes to Tony telling Steve Rogers. And I I love this line, by the way. Telling Steve Rogers sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect little teeth. Wow. <laughs> it's like that, oh, that... I actually... <laughs> Yeah, that that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I was like I love the I love the line. Like it's gonna be really cool actually watching that in the movie. And this isn't Tony in his Iron Man outfit, this is Tony as Tony. Like this is an Iron Man. Nice. So he's just in his. This is just normal. He's just in his normal like suit or, or whatever he's wearing. It doesn't say what he's wearing, but yeah. he's not in. Um, he's not in there yet. Uh, moves moves along to the uh, last uh, last couple scenes is Iron Man and War Machine standing side by side in their costumes. Nice. And this is where it gets interesting. Hawkeye and Black Widow fighting each other. Ooh, ooh, so, love is with, moral. Yeah. <laughs> With Black Widow asks, "We're still friends, right?" And Hawkeye responds, "Depends on how hard you hit me." Um, you, you do realize, forget that um, Hawkeye is actually married and with yeah, kids. That's... Yeah, we... I know. It, it was. Yeah. And to me, that was a the, one of the worst sort of parts of that Avengers movie. I was just yeah, like, "What the shit?" So you'd, weird. you'd sent all of the previous Avengers, like the previous movies they've been in, as. It, an interest together, cool. and then you just shat all over it in a second. It's like, what the fuck? No, they turn around and try to set up um, Banner. the Hulk and... Yeah, because that makes more sense. Not. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So, then we move on to the final scene of this reel, where it is Ant-Man being Captain America for the first time. Uh, why? <laughs> Because they need because they need Ant Man to help them fix Bucky. Yeah, to get his arm out of out of um the some thing. sort of jack or something. Yeah. And um, it ends with um 
Paul Rudd, uh, Paul Rudd saying, thanks for thanking, <laughs> oh, thanking of me. So he is tongue-tied when he says this. It's not meant to be thinking of me, but it's a thanks for thinking of me. Yeah, it's thanks and, for thinking of me. Uh, th thanks for thinking of me. Yeah, and that's it. And that's how it cuts off. Yeah. So yeah, nice little re reel, nice little setup for a lot of things. And now I'm gonna mention the fu the um the funeral. There is a rumor. There is a rumor flying about that Black Panther's dad is going to die in the movie. Ooh, and that's what spawns the war machine. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what I'm guessing that's what the big commotion at the beginning is. Because in the animated um, movie, they do, is um, is the his dad is Black Panther before um, before he before um, the actual Black Panther takes over. I cannot remember his name. I think it's Chawanga or something. Yeah, Chawanga Lila. I, <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's not, but he's so... got two eyes and he's male and doesn't have purple hair. No, no mention of Spidey in the reel, although we know he is there and the costumes are there. So yeah, the 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 thing about Spidey is they're probably going to keep him ferreted and buried away so far from any prying eyes. Yeah, that, they... yeah. As I said, the, the, the only thing we've seen so far is mention of a costume, and that's it. So they're really doing a really good job of, of keeping Spidey hidden from the media. Considering how good a job they're doing with um, the Star Wars stuff leaks and the other Civil War leaks, <laughs> aka almost nothing, with the exception of the Mark Hamill one, where they're just filing DMCA's everywhere. everywhere. So, yeah. Yeah. They've... I'll, I will mention that. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get to that later on. Yeah. So. Yeah. So yeah, now we move on to Star Wars. Woo! The main <laughs> event, and it's only taken twenty minutes. <laughs> so Finally, it was wasn't much for um Force Awakens, apart from a post, apart from a movie poster. Yep, which and looks which... looks pretty cool, and has Han Solo yep. like buried at the bottom, and looks really... yeah, has Han Solo with his blaster. The more interesting, the more interesting I, I like is it um, has Kylo Ren on one side, it has Finn on the other side holding Anakin's blue lightsaber, and then it has Ray, and then it has Ray in the middle. Yeah, I'm I'm really starting to think somehow Ray and Kylo Ren are going to be related. I don't know how, but it's just a leaning. I've got a leaning feeling towards it. So you you understand how the Kylo Ren naming scheme, don't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah, do you want to explain that to everybody really quick, since yeah, it was so just Kyle sort of announced? Isn't actually his name. He he was taken in by the Knights of Ren. Yeah. And Ren is the equivalent of Darth. Yes. In the naming scheme, so. So I think, so basically think Darth Kylo or something like that. Yeah, well, Kylo Darth, technically. Yeah. So, so it's, not like, it's not like his name, it's not like Kylo Ren is like Anakin Skywalker, it's not his actual yeah. name, it's, it's like... Darth Vader was bestowed upon him. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I, I like the um the, the the description they gave for him is that he he appreciates all of Vader's work. It's like I kind of like this a bit because it kind of shows that he's done his re research on the Sith. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of really cool. A lot of people just saying, "Oh, J.J. Abrams wrote him in wrote himself into the film." It's like, no, no, no. He's done study on the previous Sith. This is really smart. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So yeah, um, and then they had up on the stage, they had uh, Harrison Ford. Very Harrison, nice. Harrison mm -hmm. was there, and then they had um. Uh, considering how many things have gone wrong with him in the last two years, I'm surprised that he wasn't just wheeled out on a gurney, just strapped to it, screaming, "I'm invincible! <laughs> Unlimited <laughs> power!" Yeah. <laughs> So. Oh, yeah, and then they brought out um, John Boyega, uh, Daisy Ridley, um, Oscar Isaac, and Lupita Nyong'o. So basically, F Finn, Ray, um, Oscar Isaac, and I can't remember. Lupita is an alien, but I can't remember what her what her alien's name is. Yeah, but she's doing CGI stuff, so nice. there is a bit of CGI in it. But when isn't there? Well, it, considering JJ little... is doing practical f for as much as humanly possible. Possible with practicals, it's it, they have to they do have to do a little bit of CGI with like the lightsabers and stuff, obviously. Yeah. And the glasses and stuff, so obviously you got to use that. But 
Yeah. But um, yeah, then comes a real bombshell. Tom Baker's going to be voicing a character that Doctor is officially in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Not that bombshell. Damn. <laughs> Rogue One. The, the cast photo? Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. That looks so... And now I understand why they have the, um, all the Asian actors in it. Yeah. Because it, cause it looks really cool. <laughs> like it, and it, yeah. I, I've noticed a couple of things in the shot. In the background, it looks as though there's a, there's a giant engine. It almost looks like a giant pod racing engine. It does. And there's a second little swarm, but the B one's like, is that a pod racer? It's like, are they using an old... And the the place that they're using looks like Yavin. The brickworks and everything looks like the Yavin 4 base. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's nice to um, get a bit of... Nice to get to see some... Um, like to see a, cut, uh, a photo or something out of it now. And it just looks really awesome. Oh, yeah. So, really looking forward to that one. That's going to be really nice to... Because obviously Star Wars traditionally has always been focused on like the Jedi and the Sith and stuff like that. It's nice to get the movies that don't focus on it. Yeah, exactly. Like, Just I, as I, long I, as we don't get Star Wars, the New Republic Senate. We uh, are here to debate Bill Number Seven Five Six Six Seven Nine 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 Four Three. Waste for- disposal on Coruscant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please just yeah. Just... Oh, wow. <laughs> isn't that isn't that just isn't that just what the underworld is? Yeah, well, I'm more thinking that's episode one, two, and three in a sentence, but yeah. Yeah. But yeah, and then um, last little bit of Force Awakens. Uh, JJ um j- jumps on the joins the stage, and he says this tidbit, and I really like this. I quote from J.J. Abrams, I went over to John Williams' house one day and he played me on his, on his piano music he was going, con- con- uh, going to conduct. It was like hearing music from the gods. Very nice. I cannot wait to hear that music come on the screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm wait, gonna... wait, wait. Music comes on the screen? <laughs> yes, it comes on the screen. Sounds kinky. <laughs> Giggity. Anyway. Um, any other big news? Uh, that involves sci-fi and pop culture? Not really. Okay. As I said, there's a lot of animated stuff that doesn't really focus on us. This is more kid, kids' movies. Like there are a couple of ones like Zootopia and stuff, but yeah, boring. No, okay, really question. Really... I know this has nothing to do with um sci-fi. Is there a, okay. meant to be a fantastic? Uh, not fantastic. Um, Incredibles two. Yes. Movie. yes. Yes. yes, that is definitely happening. So, okay. so finally, the the only the only Fantastic Four movie that has ever worked ever is finally getting a sequel. Yes. <laughs> there. Uh, sorry, it is. It's 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 it's, 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 it's not the Fantastic Four we asked for. It's the Fantastic Four we deserve. <laughs> Technically, four and a half. The baby has powers as well. Yeah. Yeah. Turns into a tiny little demon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I found mm. hilarious. Yeah. Anyway, um, just one last thing on Star Wars. I think the biggest announcement that came out of that was actually that they're going to be adding not one, but two different Star Wars themes expansions to the Disneyland <laughs> in Disney Florida World. and the other one in America that I can't remember. Yeah, uh, it is... California? Yes. We're in Australia. We're allowed to forget where Disneyland is, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying yeah, to... in Florida. Just, yeah. just set, comment all your hate mail below in the comment section. Just say, Stuart, you're an idiot. It is in... And, it's, yeah. It's in Florida. Yeah, I know one's in Florida. I'm trying to think where the other one is. Um, anyway. And so they're going to be 14 acres each, which is the single largest expansion to... Um, single largest expansion to... the. Disney has had to their theme parks, period. Yeah. So like 14 is... acres is huge. Yeah. I, I, I legit am going to find a way over and go see that. I so want to go find, see that. I'd hate Was to it 14 acres or 14 have... hectares? I hate to think of how many people are out of houses. Uh, uh, it was 14-something. 14, 14 acres. Two 14 acre. Yeah. Star Wars theme yeah, Los Angeles is the other Disneyland. Thank you. Thank you. LA. Thank you. Thank you. 
yeah. Um, was that Dragon? Yeah, that was Dragon. Thank you, Dragon. Um, no, just talking to the comments again, like always. To really <laughs> put that in yeah. context every now and again so it doesn't and sound like we're crazy. And for the final Star Wars news, <laughs> there is so much different news from different films. We have a director for Episode Nine. Ooh, shiny! Jurassic, yeah, Jurassic World director Colin Trevorrow is going to fil- is going to direct Star Wars Episode Nine. At least we know what the the sequel to Jurassic World is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Dinosaurs with lasers. Yeah. yeah like, as long as the T Rex has got ev- mi- mini guns on it, it's going to be awesome. Anyway, um, so here's a question. Um, if you go. since they're making two expansions to the theme park, so everyone's going to have a lot of extra space for new rides and stuff. If you guys could add a ride, what ride would you add? Uh, for both? For like for one, one either, for each? Either. You only oh. get to add one ride. Oh, because I've got one ride and I've got one attraction. Like, oh. you know, like the Sai Charlie games okay. and stuff? Pret- pret- pretend you're Amy for one. <laughs> and I'll let you have both. <laughs> That's mean. That's the problem, because all I think is a Stargate. Yeah. <laughs> so it would be a Stargate, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, Ooh. um... Playing with the tunnel jumper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. I, I, yeah, it's, called, it's called Thread the Needle. You've got to fly the puddle jumper into the Stargate without blowing up. You've got, you've got three <laughs> millimetres clearance on either side. If you make it through, you win a prize. I'd I love a ride to... I, not be the trench run from from Star Wars, but like they're already something... doing that. Yeah, no, it's something flying related. Well, like wh- maybe, maybe like you're like you're a passenger on the Millennium Falcon, you're going through an a- the asteroid field or something. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be a pretty cool ride. Yeah, and so it's like and so like they're also to... doing an X-wing simulator as well. Yeah, well, I knew the simulator was coming, which I really want to go play. Yeah, so just shouting mm-hmm. at the dragon. Again. Don't we all? But yeah, like, yeah. You know like those motion rides where you like you go into a booth and you lock the door and it moves around and stuff and you've got to hold yeah. on? Do something like that with the asteroid field would be really cool. That would be pretty cool. And then and then um you know like those shooting games that are like the Echo? Yeah. Make mm. one with make one with hard solo blaster and you have to shoot Greedo. Well <laughs> I, I was gonna say the uh, my one was gonna be a shooting one as well, because it's America and everyone loves guns over there. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> Uh, yeah. Don't be a stereotype. Eh, eh, eh. I just said that to annoy Amy. Anyway, <laughs> um, annoying Amy. It's part of my job. Um, so is me keeping you on track. Obviously. Yep. <laughs> yep. This is perfect counterbalance. Anyway, um, my one would be a shooting gallery where you've got to shoot at pod races. So you get a sand people rifle. And the pod oh, races whiz past on a screen, and yeah. you've got to shoot at the pod races. And the more pod races you hit, the more points you get. And the pod races whiz past like they're doing three laps. And if you blow up all of them, you get a really big prize. <laughs> you know, it'd be a really funny game. You pull on a sword trooper helmet, and you can't hit. And the idea is to try and hit nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. You put on a stormtrooper helmet, and it's blacked out, and you get points for everything you actually hit. <laughs> oh, actually, I, I take that one better. You put on a mask, you get a lightsaber, and you have to deflect everything, but you can't see it. You wow! Have use, you have to use your sound, your um, your your sounds, your sound use sense. Use the force. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty and fun. It, and instead of like getting hit with a laser, like it squirts you with water or something, make it child friendly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like it how he turns swing a thing, a, a blade around. And then said, yeah, make it child-friendly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see this ending really well. Uh, we need first aid for the lightsaber swinging move again. Um, another child has lost their arm. Well, obviously it'd be a plastic lightsaber. It's not going to be a real one. Well, that's boring. That'd be common sense. Oh, wait. Because <laughs> that's boring. Hey, we're talking about Disney here. They have measles outbreaks. Measles, measles is something that should have been eradicated in that country already. Damn you, anti-vaxxers. <laughs> Alright, now for my my one. Yes. Be like a maxi-tune pod racer game. 
Oh, okay. oh yeah. So like you 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 are gonna do that? You're gonna play the game to upgrade your your pod and stuff. Yeah, like oh, nice. Engines and stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Something simple, but you know. Yeah, it'll be popular. Yeah. Yeah. And actually have like the gyro with it as well. Yeah, so as you fly around, the, the whole thing bucks and kicks and bounces and wobbles. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. And you could tie that game into the shooting game and have the people who are shooting actually shoot at the pod racers players. And oh, actually be... have the pod racers blow up and then respawn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you shoot them again and blow them up again. Ha <laughs> ha! You're not going anywhere. Just camp the spawn point. <laughs> Well, they wouldn't be allowed to like just shoot the spawners. Aww, that's like, that'd, that'd that's not rage inducing fun. Unfair. Yeah, but we we were all about rage inducing fun. Yeah, no. but at the same time, you've got environmental hazards, yeah. and then you've got other that... player hazards, and then you've got the um sand people hazards. Yeah, and they've already got. What a couple of dozen different tracks from the different pod racer games. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be actually be a lot of fun. I think. Um, what other Star Wars themed things? We can we play toss the Senate where you get to throw <laughs> you get to throw <laughs> little little replicas of the Senate plinths that they float around on, and How it's like it's like a ring How... toss. <laughs> oh, I still I still have a really bad one. Oh God, <sighs> Amy, go. What about yeah, jumping, you know, the, as you said, the flying platforms? Yeah. What about um, parkour? How you have to jump from one to another? Yeah. Having a fun oh, yeah. on me. <laughs> How about we play Anakin Skywalker? <laughs> let's play, let's be Anakin Skywalker and murder the Tusken Raiders. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. That would go down well with children. <laughs> hey, it's better than the other alternative what he did. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot better than the other no, one. No, no, no. You, you gave me a really good idea. <laughs> Let's poison the water that Jar Jar Binks lives in. They Somebody did that the... poison the water hole. They I did mean, that what? in the Clone Some Wars. Mysteries. They actually did that in the Clone Wars TV show. They actually poisoned the water in Naboo. Really? And all the Gunkins were dying. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember that one. <laughs> that was an actual storyline. Wow. All I'm going to say is, whoever came up with that story, you win a beer. Next time you meet me, you get a beer. Until then, I'm keeping your beer. Which mm, reminds beer. me, I need to start watching that. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Another thing that was being rumoured to be happening, outside of the whole theme park thing, was Disney has been talking, potentially talking, I should say, to Netflix about doing TV series. And we here, being Star Wars fans, thought, you know what, we can spin up some pretty good TV series to put on Netflix for for Star Wars, and they can have all the ideas for free. Um, so, who's come up with an idea for a TV series? Me, for once. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Amy? Oh, wow. So Amy, Amy, the Star Wars TV series girl. What's your idea? <laughs> um, how... Um, Han's actually found um, Wookie. How found Han? Wookie. How Han found Chewie? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was, that involved a furry page. <laughs> <laughs> pretty sure that was also that was also a book series as well. Yeah, yeah, but the no, book series um, don't count anymore. Remember, Disney tore them up and burned them all. Yeah, but they no, could it's essentially more steal how, the plot lines. Yeah. yeah. How Chewie found Han's, like from when he grew up and all that. How well, got we, to we, we should up. have a so what you're saying is have an entire TV series of <laughs> <laughs> hi it is a nice day it's nice to see you just the subtitles much. the whole series just subtitled <laughs> <laughs> so like, like, there is some and, shows that I like that and the, the title can be a day in the life of a Wookiee yeah damn it I was gonna say that <laughs> <sighs> and, it, and it could be a buddy comedy with a with Chewie and an Ewok <laughs> he and did they... seem to get along with the Ewoks quite well. Yeah. We could we could call it G Walk Adventures. Okay. No. Next. <laughs> Aww. Have you got one, Sky? 
I honestly don't have one. I can't really think of one, to be honest. Right. Well, I've got two different ideas. One is... Um, it's a similar sort of concept to what they're doing with the Han Solo movie. Sort of set a story for Han Solo back, say, early 20s, mid-20s. Sort of whenever he left, whatever random home planet he had. Um, uh, and he's Corellia. Whatever. And started going around in space. Start him off in a junker ship, and by the end of the series, sort of introduce all the different bits and pieces that made him the Han Solo we all know and love. <laughs> but at the same time, have sort of a parallel story um, taking place with Boba Fett, and have Boba Fett sort of doing different bounties and doing all that sort of thing and becoming the bounty hunter that we all know and love. And every now and again, you can sort of have them cross over and have like this big sort of uh, moment where Boba Fett's chasing Han and Han manages to bullshit the bullshit and escapes. And, and then maybe later on down the track, for whatever reason, Han is chasing Boba Fett because who knows? I'm not a writer. I just throw crap against the wall and see what sticks. That's what I do. So, Stuart. Yeah. Yeah. is a lot smarter than most of the other um, droids. Oh, that's because he's an ascended ancient stuck inside a robot. <laughs> that makes so much sense, actually. Yeah. It's why well, I... because Hans refuses to, um, Skywalker or whoever owns it refuses to wipe it completely. Yeah. After every mission. So... Would you believe I just came up with an idea? Yay! Get all of, no. like, have a series all about Jar Jar's people. Sky, you're, you're fired. <laughs> Aww. Sky, you're out the airlock. Goodbye. <laughs> anyway, Stuart, what what ideas do you have? <laughs> um, I've got a couple. My first one would, be, would involve um Rex and the clones. Yep. I know we're gonna get a mention. I know they're gonna be in Rebels, but I'd love to see. Because I don't know if they'll if they'll do much on it, but how they ex how what they did during Order sixty six and and what happened and what they did afterwards. Yeah, that'd I be pretty cool. I don't know if they'll mention much on that on Rebels on in like flashbacks or something or. Yeah. But just I've always I've always liked the clones, and it's always just like the clones don't get much of a story. Like they get little arcs every now and then. Yeah. But... And only then it's like a specific clone for like half an episode. Yeah. So no, except, I love, except, I love except for that, ex, except for the um, bonus episodes that Disney released, oh yeah, of the, of the, Clone yeah. Wars, where they sort of focused on the Order sixty six accidentally being leaked and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. What funny at the um... Order sixty six is a thing, and the the clones, um, the Anakin's group of clones specifically, the main clones that we'd followed for most of the series. Um, work out what the hell's going on with it, and they all bail. So, effectively. Yeah, since we know that they took out the chips in their head, so that's yeah. why they didn't follow it. Exactly. So but yeah, that'd be that be that's one of my ideas. What about after the clones had left? Follow them after they've left. No, that's only like it starts during Order sixty six, and it follows their story. Yeah. After okay. like after. Yeah. Until they pop in, until they come into Rebels. Yeah. Yeah. My second idea would be a more grittier adult-based sort of series, sort of like Torchwood compared to Doctor Who. Um, so aimed not at the kids but at adults, and have it set during the Old Republic, and focus around Revan. And, and what he did, and just have it almost Game of Thrones level. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Well, it's still very regularly. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> Master Revan. Star Wars. Master, <laughs> Master Revan. Star Wars. Oh, Master yeah. Revan. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah. so just give Star Wars a hell of a lot of sex scenes and a lot of violence, and we're fine. We <laughs> have a plot. That doesn't exist, really. Well, you just take, all over the place. Take take the Revan games and use that um, sort of as the core concept of the story. So, Knights of the Old Republic one and two, 
and have Revan as the as the main character. Preferably, I think it was number two where Revan started off as a good guy and sort of slowly but surely realized he was actually a bad guy that had been turned good. Um, is that right? I think number one was like that. Um, M- might have been number one then. As a bad guy, a uh, good guy. And then you find out you're without a bad guy. powers. Yeah. 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 You don't find out until you burst off Malik. Yeah, that's you're right. Which, which is like halfway through, the, which is like over halfway through the game. Yeah. Seventy-five percent away through the game, I think it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bombshell. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and you have that. So, you, and you have that as your sort of story. I think that could be done really well. Especially because the Old Republic is barely touched upon outside of games. Yeah. You've got mm. that massive time period from back then and the modern movies where there's just nothing now. And it's just ripe for storytelling. You could even go to, say, when Yoda was learning the Force and follow the Jedi Order then and how different it is then compared to now. Or even the establishment of the the two the two um, policy. What, what is it? The the Sith policy the where master, the... the master the, there can only be two. The master <laughs> and the apprentice. Yeah, that's it. The, there can only be two policy. Um, the master and the apprentice, and that's it. Even though it did get a tad screwy thanks to the Clone Wars. Oh, I know how the the two policy came in. Yeah. <laughs> um, Basically, there are tons of Sith and Carbon, and they just turned on each other, and murdered each other. Pretty much, yeah. That's how that's how the two policy came in. Yeah. So yeah. And um sort of follow maybe the Sith instead. And the Sith slow but sure sort of rise to power. There's the Star Wars universe is ripe for storytelling. Oh yeah. Especially... There's one, there's a, there are so many books and I've always loved the books. Because there's yeah. so many ways that you can tell stories with books. Exactly. So, yeah. I would yeah, it'd be it'd be really cool. Really, May I really redeem cool. myself with the idea of a movie? Maybe. No. As long as it doesn't involve Gunkins. No, this one does not involve Gunkins. Actually, a whole pod racer movie. Sort of. Yeah. So what? Like the entire <laughs> movie is put Mad Max. Well, how about <laughs> pretty much? How about we spin that idea into a TV show? And have it as sort of a Hut Empire racing type series, where we follow the different teams around different tracks and sort of the behind the scenes stuff. And um, it'd probably be boring as shit, but there is potential. Yeah, that's why I say movies because if you put it in like a movie or two, it might be able to like do it well. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. movies rather than TV shows. <laughs> I've got a really interesting story. Oh god! Uh, for a second TV show. Oh god! L- Leia growing up in the in the political system of Alderaan. What? No one? No yeah. one likes that idea? Like no, like, I no, I totally agree. The only mention of Leia that we get of her growing up really is in the Forced Unleashed games. We don't get anything else. Yeah, that is actually a fair point. We don't understand how she became the princess of Alder of Alderaan. Yeah. Isn't she born that way? No, no she was adopted into um, oh, she was kidnapped. Lando's family. Lando's family? <laughs> uh, no, no, uh, Senator Bail Organa. Yeah. Okay. So she's pretty much kidnapped. No. no oh. she, um, she was well, born go- at the end of three with Luke. Yeah. Um, and Obi Wan gives her to Senator, Senator Bale. because Senator and- Bail's like, my wife and me have tried, been trying to have kids, and we haven't been able to, so. We'll take her and pretend that she's ours. Um, and with, with, um, Owen and Baru. Yeah, and the other one just yeah, because Anakin won't go searching where his mum used to live. Well, he never really did. He never did. That's the that's but seriously. I know. Okay, to be fair, it is Anakin. He never was bright. That is Except a fair point. Pod racer. Okay, the only time he was bright was when he was a pod racer. He, that's it. As that's soon as he got taken over the pod racer, dead. It was like his mind got killed. Yeah. He went from technical genius who can build C-3PO and a pod racer from junk parts at the age of well, six or seven or eight or something. And not just any pod racer, one that could 
like win at the um Tatooine at Mos Eisley's Mos Eisley. <laughs> um, track, which is one of the most Hot difficult, <laughs> most difficult tracks. Um, and to in the next movie. <laughs> I wish too much. I have a Jerry Cross on Padme. God damn it. Yeah. Like, dude, she's almost old, is old enough to be your mother. <laughs> what well, the yeah, shit? I, well, I'm going to say, how, uh, Anakin's what? He's he's eight in episode one. And yeah. how old Padme? I think she's old, like 18 or something. Yeah. The th- cougar much? Yeah. I noticed that. I was like, Padme's a cougar. Yeah. Yeah. Her hunting him or him hunting her? The first time I thought she was 16. Yeah. Even still, that doesn't make it any better. (laughs) No. It's a little better than 18. Yeah, but he looks anywhere between 6 and 8. Yeah, he does not look 10. I thought he was 10. Oh, no, he's 10 in the movies, but he does not look 10. He doesn't look 10. No. So So he wants to be a toy boy. So... Yeah, it's it was bad. Yeah, it's back like, back, back on topic, I'd love to see I love to see a TV show of Leia growing up, in 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 the, in the political system of how, of how she learnt everything, became the the princy little princess that she was. Yeah, that's you I mean the the psycho little stabby while you're not looking princess. <laughs> yeah. Who tells people they're too sh- aren't you too short to be a stormtrooper? And and can use the force and eventually gets a lightsaber. Oh God, we're all screwed. <laughs> oh God. That'd be like giving me a lightsaber. I'm not joking. She actually, she actually learns to harness the force and gets a lightsaber. That's <laughs> terrifying. Which isn't surprising. That 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 that. It's Ow. still terrifying. Yeah. So yeah. So there you go, Disney. We've given you quite a few free show ideas there to run away with. And if you want us to give you more show ideas, feel free to contact us at facebook.com/savesci-fi. <laughs> Anyone else out there who, for whatever insane reason, wants to make a complaint about any of our ideas, feel free to contact us at not at facebook.com slash not save sci fi. It doesn't quite work that way. Yes, it doesn't. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> next. Uh, next. So, Stuart, do you have any actual news? Yeah, yeah, I've got some. I do have some actual news. Cool, sweet. We'll start with Oz Comic Con. Oh, yes. There have been a lot of people announced for Oz Comic Con. Yeah, I think about like four, four, yeah. four different people. Yeah, Amanda Tapping cancelled, and we were just like, no! And then I said, you can have us. David Hewlett, and yeah, that, you can go, that's, you that's get... where I stopped caring, to be perfectly honest. I was just like, yes, I'll have all of the Hewlett. He's mine now. <laughs> I told the David Hewlett, and he, he fanboyed so hard. Have it, have it, have it, have it. Mine, mine. And then, um, you can't have then, him. then yeah. on Friday, I think it was Friday. Yes, Friday they announced uh, Jim Beaver, who plays Bobby in in Supernatural. At which point oh. I just, at which point I just sort of went, bing, I'm done, thunk. Yep. <laughs> and then today we got two more people announced. Um, artist Marianne de de Pierre. Yeah. She does a lot of um. She does a lot of um, landscape uh, reserves for like a lot of big films and stuff. Oh, nice! From, uh, yeah, and she's also the awarding author of um Sentience of Orion and Peacemaker, um book series. I've actually read Sentience of Orion, a really good series. So very nice. Looking forward to her. And then the rec- most recent um addition to to our gigantic cast of guests, which is absolutely amazing. Oh yeah, my 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 bank account is crying, and yeah. it's still weeks it's, out. Is Rachel Nichols? Oh yeah. So she has been in co- the the lots of things, mostly yeah. Continuum. Yeah, it, uh, Continuum, GI Joe, Star, uh, new Star Trek, Conan the Barbarian. Like she's been um um Alias as well. Hmm. So yeah, she's been on a lot of things. So oh yeah, nice to get. So yeah. just like I said, this cast is just getting bigger and better. Yeah. And online tokens are going on sale for Oz Comic Con. So any time in the next sort of couple of weeks, they'll say next week or so? Yeah, yeah, so, next week, I believe. I think just it was grab- they, they mentioned something about Wednesday. Um, so I don't know if it's this week or next week, but the online tokens are going up for sale. So if you are attending and you want to buy the online tokens, 
get ready to uh, this week. This week, this week for Oz Comic Con. Sorry. This week Oz Comic Con. Sweet. Um. So yeah, it's gonna be good. So yeah, that's okay. what we just been acting. Buy all the tickets and yeah, buy all the tokens now. Yeah. If you're gonna it buy your tokens, the... buy it all of them. Because it saves a hell of a lot of time. Them. It didn't take too long through the line. Uh, yeah. With this, trust me, with this cast, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be a lot busier this year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just now, hope they don't do what they. I just hope they don't do what they did down south, which was make the people who paid online line up with the people who didn't. Yeah, that was silly. Mm. That was bad. That was hopefully very they're... very bad. Hopefully they've learned from other mistakes. Yeah. All right, moving along to some interesting news. Uh, Ronda Rousey has wants to uh, film wants to be uh, Captain Marvel. Uh, no, Ronda Rousey put it out to Marvel that she wanted to be a superhero, and one of her fans heard about that and then drew her as Captain Marvel, and she retweeted it saying, "Come on, Marvel, you know you want to." <laughs> and to be perfectly honest, if I was Marvel, I'd be to be like, "Yes, yes, yes, you can, you can do it, you can do it. Just don't hurt us, please." <laughs> the, the the biggest women's fire in the world. Why the hell not? Yeah, pretty much. Which is, I guess a lot of people are, is the question of of can she act is what everyone's worried about. So yeah. Well, isn't I, she? A, I, like... I thought she was a wrestler. Ah, uh, you. She's the UFC women's champion. Oh, okay. I please forgive me. Don't hurt me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And, and now we come along to some of the happiest news I have seen in a while. Constantine lives. Yes, he is yes. doing an hour crossover. Thank you, CW. The downside to that is I now have to watch Constantine, so I know what the hell's going on. <laughs> I know. But I'm yeah. sorry. I've been but watching yes. too much other things. Constantine yeah, wasn't really on the list. Stuff, but yes, Matt Ryan is re is reprising his role for Constantine appearing on Arrow. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, so happy that they did that. Oh, yeah. Because... A lot of people were t pissed off and only got one season. It, it got the Firefly treatment, and and I think it, it almost got the same reaction as well. Everyone oh, yeah. Lo everyone lobbying hard. Yeah. Keeping on yeah. that. that that's, that's, was, what, please, it wasn't Fox that did Constantine, was it? I think it was CBS. Yeah. Which poor, makes sense. poor Constantine. Yeah. So, yeah. Keeping on our news... We have we have a new addition to the Arrow, the bat the Batman and the Bat family have the Batcave, the Team Arrow have the Arrow bunker. Nice. Yes, and so it looks pretty wicked too. Yep, and there's different um, it's not just one big space. There's, it's one big area, but there's also areas for certain people. There's an area for listening to work. There's an area for Oliver to walk uh, work out, and there's a garage. So. Nice. Hmm. I'm sure Felicity doesn't mind um, <laughs> Arrow well, yeah. working in front of him, in front of her. <laughs> Just get a bit distracting. Oh yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, that's cool. Uh, this is really cool for for Flash. Doctor Light has been casted for season two as a as a villain, the female version, I should say, because there is a male and fe female. So, ex Star Labs employee Dr. Kimio um, Hoshi Light will be making a small screen um, small screen debut on Flash. Nice. First hmm. reference in the Arrow episode, The Man Under the Hood. So yeah, she she is. It's really nice to get um, Dr. Light and uh oh. Sorry, with Amy <laughs> is reading the chat room. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's the eye candy of, of Stephen Amell. Uh, <laughs> leave Oliver alone. Keep it off, and you guys will be failing this um, spaceship. Yeah. <laughs> Casey Jensen, you have failed. failed this How set. would I have failed? I'm female. I said, I said Casey. Yeah. Not you. Casey Jensen, you have failed this ship. You shall be beamed to the to the planet below that just happens to be full, just happens to have a cloning machine. <laughs> Don't take any DNA samples with you. <laughs> I shall never leave. <laughs> anyway, 
back. Yeah. Just never. I shall never leave him alone. <laughs> oh, guys. Okay, back on track. Yes. Okay. We'll we'll leave <laughs> Oliver alone. Okay. Uh, no, we're not. Leave Oliver alone. Sorry. No, we're, not. <laughs> we're actually keeping on Stephen and Mel. And I am going to mention his match at SummerSlam. Oh. Oh yes. So yes, uh, Stephen Amell uh, is going to be involved in WWE SummerSlam. He's having a match against Stardust and King Barrett. Nice. So he's actually going to wrestle, and I don't know if he's going to wear the Green Arrow outfit, as they are billing him as Green Arrow. That'd be pretty cool if he did. So but that's that is like epic level of um, way to bring the really debut the suit like, in action, like advert advertising it. Like yeah, yeah. And he's That'd been... almost be like putting Captain America in a boxing ring with Iron Man as a preview for Civil War and just have them literally beat the shit out of each other. But yeah, like... so he's going to be in a match. He's actually doing training at the moment. He's got a minor uh, tongue um, tongue injury at the moment. He sounds like Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> oh, well, Adrian! What did he do to himself? Oh, uh, he just saw... He just took a bump and he kind of cut his lip a bit and his tongue. Oh, okay. Uh, nothing serious, he's just got a bit of a lisp. Yeah, uh, that's just like that's just like that, you know? Next! Yeah, next! Yeah. Fantastic Four is, well, not fantastic at all. Yeah. I thought we already worked that one out. But based on our reviews last week, I suspect we were very, very generous. In the with way, way, way more generous than we should have been. So it yeah. ended up. So it ended up being fantastically poor. Oh, it's it's so bad. Yeah, like, it, I would it, rate it as the second worst movie I've seen this year. Behind Pixels. <laughs> it's it's the only movie worse is Pixels, and the hilarious part is people are rating it lower than Pixels. But I still think Pixels almost made me want to throw up. Fantastic Four didn't make me want to throw up. So. Yeah. That's the so, saving so grace. So after 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 only getting twenty five million in in its opening weekend, it only managed to get eight million this past weekend. Yeah, and the it's so bad that Fox is actually petitioning people who are watching it, saying, "Well, what do you guys think we should do with this?" Give My first to, thought is, give it give, to Disney, give it to Marvel. And release a director's cut how he wanted to have the movie originally. Those would be my two thoughts. Yeah. So. Mm. Or, or do what um, Sony doing with Spidey and cut a deal like that so they can still bring him into the MCU. Or just blatantly give the rights over as well. That works. But yeah, that uh, on, on as far as news goes, that's it. Sweet. I don't think I've missed anything. Oh, well, look at that. We've got... got all the major stuff. We've got contest winners. Yeah, oh, cont no, we should mention The Expanse. Oh, yes, The Expanse, The Expanse. The yes, Expanse. So the Expanse is premiere on Sci-Fi, and one of our good friends, Cass Anvar, is going to be starring in it. Very nice. Oh, right, yeah. So go check that out. Yeah. Sweet. Well, we've got a bit over a minute left, so I just wanted to say that this podcast is brought to you by Simon Says Hobbies and Games. It is a new retail shop open in Browns Plains, Queensland, stocking traditional hobby products and the latest board games. It is located at uh, Shop 3, 45 Grand Plaza Drive, Browns Plains. Go to Grand Plaza, drive around the back, look for bow repairs i'm pretty sure it is giant orange building can't miss bow repairs it's right next door to that it's brilliant so hmm might have to go there one time oh that actually I... is it me there. did we i think well, i've missed something actually i forgot to announce <laughs> one last thing nick frost is going to be at supernova brisbane completely forgot about that and i'm so glad i just co that came off my screen oh yeah <laughs> so yeah Anyway, that's it for us tonight. We are counting down the final 30 seconds or so. When, oh, God, that music is loud. Sorry. <laughs> I forgot to, forgot to turn the music down from the intro. <laughs> anyway, that's tonight's podcast. Thank you for listening. Uh, we will catch you next week. Later, guys. Bye, everyone.
And remember, if you are near Indrapilly and you want to join us for Anime Night, it is held at the Indrapilly Shopping Centre Library. Go outside, look for the late hours book return, double white door, we're in behind there. Bye! Just knock. Bye! Just knock. Bye! Just knock. Bye! Just knock. Bye. Just knock.